open the design in Illustrator. Now, as we can see, the design normally done with flat rectangle. But for printing for paper cup, the design must be warped like this. Some designers said that we make our design flat, then use the warp option in Illustrator. This method is 10% right and 90% wrong. The reason is, when you use warp option, some elements in your design will be stretched and some will not be affected. Because of that, you can use warp on some elements and on the others, you should use a different method. To prove that, we will use Esco plugin to show if we use warp option, the design will be correct or not. Now, in previous lesson, we used the manual method to draw our die line. But in this lesson, we will demonstrate how to use Esco plugin to make the same die line with the same dimensions. In manual method, we use the diameter and the circumference of the top and bottom circles. But in ESCO, we will use the radius. So, the top circle diameter is 7 cm, so that the radius will be 3.5 cm, and the bottom circle diameter is 5 cm, so the radius will be 2.5 cm. We start with drawing a horizontal line, change width to 3.5 cm. Now, as we can see, we don't have any color for fill and no stroke. To change that to default, press D. Select the line, press Alt and drag down to duplicate. Change width to 2.5 cm. Now we want the two lines to be aligned to the left. So, with pick tool, drag a guideline by click on the ruler and drag until snap. Move second line to left until snap to guide. Draw a vertical line and change height to 8 cm, which is the height of our paper cup. Move until snap to top line. Now align the bottom line with the vertical line at the bottom. Move the bottom node until it snap to the right node of the bottom line. Zoom in to check. Drag a horizontal guide to top. Now select all, go to window, ESCO, studio toolkit for labels, revolve and add labels. Change revolve axis. As we can see, the plugin create the cup automatically. But in real, the top should be open. And normally at bottom, we should have a small edge. So press cancel to edit our profile. To get the opening at top, we should delete the top line, and to get the edge at bottom, select the bottom line and move it up a little. Now, let we see what we got. Select the lines, go to window, ESCO, studio toolkit for labels, revolve and add labels. As we can see, we have the opening at the top, and we have the edge at the bottom. Now we have to do one more thing, we need to add thickness to the paper of the cup. So press cancel to go back to our profile shape. To add thickness, we will duplicate our lines, leaving small spaces between them. So select the line, hold alt and drag to left. Select bottom line, hold alt and drag to top. As we can see, we have doubled the lines inward so that we keep our cup measurement on the outside. Zoom in. Now we need to close the gap between our lines. But first, fix horizontal lines to snap to inner edge. Now, select pen tool and close the gap. Also, we need to remove this part. Select scissor tool and cut the line here and here. With direct selection tool, select the cutted part and delete. With pick tool, select all, select nodes, right click and join. Select the other nodes, right click and join. Now for top, normally with paper cups, the top will have a rounded outside edge. So draw a circle.
and snap the top. We need to remove the left side of the circle, so with scissor tool, cut the left side. And delete it. Change stroke width of the circle to be similar to line stroke width. With pen tool, close the gap between the line and the circle. Fix the shape and join nodes together. Now, after finishing our shape profile, go to Window, ESCO, Studio Toolkit for Labels, Revolve and Add Labels. So, we can see the shape is ready. We have the rounded edge at top and the edge in the bottom, and also we have the thickness. Now, we can add label to continue our design. So, press next. We have different type of labels, but we will use roll around label. Resize the label to cover all the cap from top to bottom. Now press save as and save the file. Now the plugin will ask if you want to open the file in the current document or new document. We will choose in current document and press OK. Now as we can see the plugin created the die line automatically for us. Move shape profile aside, remove guides, go to view, guides, unlock guides, select them and delete. Now we will add our design to the die line with different methods and see how each of them will look. First, leave a copy of the design as a backup copy. Select the design and drag until snap to the die line. Now, to use Esco Warp, the design should touch all the edges of the die line. So, select background, scale from all sides until snap to die line edge. Move, scale, and align all design elements with the background. Now zoom in to check, as we can see our design touches all the edges of the die line. Now select the design, go to window, ESCO, studio toolkit for labels, conical warp. Now open studio to check our cup, click refresh, as we can see our design need to be moved up. So, move the design up and refresh again. Move down a little bit. Refresh. Check everything. Click Visualizer to raise the quality. As we can see, the conical warp done the job for us exactly as we want, and we don't need to fix anything. Press Ctrl plus Z to undo. Now the second method is to use Illustrator Warp. Select the design, go to Object, Envelope Distort, Make with Warp. Change bend until the design looks similar as possible to the die line. Press OK. Align the design with die line as possible. 
Now zoom in. As we can see the logo stretched from the sides. To prove that, draw a horizontal line from edge to edge. Check the width, it's approximately 5.5 cm. Now draw a vertical line from top to bottom. Check the height, it's approximately 4.5 cm. So our logo is no longer circular. Zoom out, open studio to see the result, press refresh. We can notice that the logo is stretched. The text and the white lines is not affected. So we can use illustrator warp in some cases, but not in all cases. And we can use it on some elements of our design. Press Ctrl plus Z to undo. Move the design up. Now we will use another method, which I found that it's the best method to be used if you don't have a scope plugin. The first step of this method is to divide the die line shape into steps. To do that, draw a line at the top from corner to corner. Draw another line at the bottom also from corner to corner. Zoom in to check the lines. Change stroke color. Select anchor point tool and start fitting the first line to top edge of the die line. Fit the second line to bottom edge. Select both and move down. Now we will create steps between them. To do that, double click on blend tool, change spacing to specified steps. Now the number of steps differs from design to design. In our design we will use 12. Press OK. Now click on the top line, then click on the bottom line. As we can see, the distance between the two lines divided into 12 steps. Select them, go to object, expand, click OK. Right click, ungroup, select all lines, hold Alt and make a copy over the die line. Snap the copy to fit exactly on the die line. Now go to view, guides, make guides, then lock. Now when we work with a die line we can make a copy and use it as a background. Here we were created the die line using ESCO plugin so we can show how our design will look in 3D and to understand the difference between the methods that we can use. For that we need to redraw the die line to set our design. So with pen tool draw over the die line. Fit to edges. Now we want to add the white lines, so we need to add the first one two steps from bottom, and the second one two steps from top. Go back to our steps. Select step 2 from top and bottom. Hold Alt and Snap to its exact location on the design. Go 
go to object, arrange, bring to front. Remove fill color. Change stroke color to white. Change stroke width to 4. Now go to object, expand, press OK. Now hold ALT and drag a copy from logo. Go to object, arrange, bring to front. Now scale and align at the center. Now we will add fresh and nature text. Right click, release compound path. Select and compound. Do the same to the second one. Select the design. Go to object. Arrange, bring to front. Now, hold Alt and drag a copy. Drag a guide to the center. Now, place the text according to steps. Now we want to mirror the text to other side. Select Reflect Tool, select the vertical guide, then drag the text. Now right click, Transform, Reflect, press OK. Now select Rotation Tool and Rotate. Align according to steps, spacing, and letters location. Now we want to add main text. Hold Alt and drag a copy. Zoom in. Go to object, envelope, distort, make with warp. Change bend until fit on the guide. Press OK. Now we will add the address. To do that, select the first step from bottom, hold Alt and drag a copy. Zoom in. Select type on a path tool. Select the path. Select font. Change font size. Start typing.
After Finish, right click Create Outlines. Move the address down and fit in place. Go to Object, Arrange, Bring to Front. Change color to white. Now arrange design elements as you want. Now let me check the result. Open Studio and press Refresh. Check the design. I will edit some elements and add final touches to it. And this is the final result. Now as you can see everything in place and everything is good and no need to do anything else. Now our design is finished.